What is going on guys, Unsurpassable Z. The Skull Cavern is a mine system located in the northwest part of the desert that can be accessed after completion of the normal mines. It is by far the best source of iridium ore, but due to the challenging nature of the cavern, it can be difficult to navigate if you don't know what you're doing. This guide is targeted at introducing players to the core mechanics of the Skull Caverns, as well as give tips and tricks to get to floor 100 and to maximize the amount of iridium that you'll get. Unlike the regular mine, there is no checkpoint system, such as the elevators. You will start at floor 1 every single time, and you will go as deep as you can, and you'll have the entire day to do so. There is no limit to the number of floors in the Skull Cavern, and because Iridium Ore is found more commonly the deeper you go, most of this guide is going to be focused on how to maximize the depth that you're able to travel in a given day. Just like the regular cave, there are ladders that will take you down one level at a time, but there are also shafts that will take you somewhere between 3 and 15 floors down, which is very crucial for descending quickly. When you jump in one of these shafts, your health will be reduced by 3 times the amount of levels that you fell. So for example, if you fall down 8 levels, your health will drop down 24 points. It is impossible for your health to go below 1 when you drop down one of these shafts, but sometimes there are creatures waiting at the bottom that can deal the final blow, so it is recommended to heal up before you jump in. There's a special mechanic that is unique to this area that will work in your favor while you're mining. While in the cavern, time actually moves more slowly than it does in every other part in the world. Normally one hour of in-game time is 42 seconds, but in the cavern it is actually 54 seconds per in-game hour. This mechanic has two consequences. You will have more real time to explore the cave, which means that you'll be able to go deeper. However, buffs from food will not actually last as long in terms of in-game time. This is not detrimental, but it should be considered while you're planning what to take with you. You'll need to prepare your inventory the night before, because every second is going to count while you're in the mines. You'll want to take a galaxy sword with you, and if you do not have one, a lava katana. You'll really want to have one of these two swords, as the other ones do not do enough damage or are not fast enough to keep up with the enemies in the Skull Cavern. Your pickaxe quality should be gold or higher. Anything below gold, you'll have too much difficulty breaking the rocks, and you won't be able to progress quickly. What's really going to allow you to move deep into the mines and to get a lot of iridium ore is going to be the bombs that you bring with you. You'll want at least 30 regular bombs and 15 mega bombs, but you really can't go overkill with this. The more you have, the better. This will be so that you can target large rock clusters when you're in the mines, and you'll be able to have a much higher chance of finding a ladder quickly, as well as blow up a lot of rocks and get a lot of omni geodes. You'll want to bring at least 3 staircases with you, but probably more than 10, as the more you have, the less picky you'll have to be about when you use them. You'll want a source of regular food to heal back your health for when you take damage. Regular food is defined by something that does not give you any buffs when you eat it. I would recommend something easy to make that you have a lot of that can heal pretty decently. I like to use omelets since we have a lot of eggs and a lot of milk and they heal close to 40. You also want to bring a buff food. The buff food is something that gives a bonus to you that can be used to help you progress in the mines. My recommendation is a spicy eel because it gives plus one luck and plus one speed. George will give you the recipe to make this once you have more than 7 hearts with him, but if you don't have that, you can buy it from the Desert Merchant for 1 ruby. If you're only going for level 100 on a given day, the Magic Rock Candy might be something that you want to get. It has numerous buffs that are incredibly useful for when you're in the Skull Cavern, and it can be purchased on Thursdays from the Desert Trader for 3 Prismatic Shards. Foods that have buffs do not stack, so as soon as you eat another food that has a buff, you will lose whatever advantage you've gained from the first thing that you ate. The one exception to this rule is coffee or the triple shot espresso. This speed will stack with whatever buff food that you have. I would recommend bringing triple shot espressos with you since they last longer than coffee. The final thing you'll need to prepare your inventory is the warp totem for the desert and optionally a warp totem for the farm. If you pass out while you're in the mines, it will cost you 1000 gold, but if you make an average of more than 2000 gold per hour, it'll be worth it to just stay in the mines until you pass out. Right when you wake up, you're going to check the fortune teller TV channel. If the spirits are in good humor or they are very happy, there's enough luck to justify going to the mines. If the spirits feel neutral, annoyed, or very displeased, it is absolutely not worth going to the mine and you'll have to try again the next day. After checking the spirits, you'll want to use your warp totem to go to the desert. Waiting until 10 o'clock for Pam to show up is way too slow and it burns too much valuable time. As soon as you've finished warping, you'll want to drink your coffee and eat your spicy eel because the speed boost can be used to get to the cavern even quicker. Enter the cavern and use your bombs to take out clusters of large rocks. Take note of the radius of each bomb and use your judgment whether to use a regular bomb or a mega bomb on a cluster of rocks. You should always either be placing a bomb or pickaxing individual rocks. You should ignore all mobs unless they are getting in your way and causing you to slow down. All of the mobs are either slow or can be maneuvered around, and because they don't drop the greatest things, it's not worth killing them. If you're going for your very first iridium in order to upgrade your pickaxe, it may be worth killing the slimes since they drop iridium ore and sometimes bars. 
If there's a mummy relatively close to the area you're planning on placing a bomb, it could be worth killing the mummy first. The mummies will drop solar essence every time you kill them, and this can be used to craft more mega bombs deeper in the mine if you run out. You should always keep your health above 100, as it can be very easy to get stacked out, and some of the enemies can hit as high as 40. If you come across a floor that is infested by monsters, or you're having a hard time finding a ladder or hole, it is worth dropping the staircase to move along quickly. And that's really all there is to it. Your biggest enemy is going to be the clock, so as long as you keep moving quickly, you'll be able to make it to floor 70 plus every time. And after some practice and some proper preparation, you'll be able to make it past floor 100 pretty consistently. Quickly to prove that every second does matter, here is my first attempt at getting to floor 100. One. No! No! Oh. Dang, you are so close! 99? Uh, if I had more bombs, I would have been okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. If it was helpful, let me know in the comments below. If you want to see this stuff live, I stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 11 Eastern at twitch.tv slash unsurpassablez. That's all I got for you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.